Hello viewers, welcome again to today's devotional using the daily fountain of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Please, we request you to invite your family and friends and all around you to join us this morning as we study the Word of God. Today is Monday, 16th October, and our topic says, the riches of God made manifest. And we shall take our text from Romans chapter 11, verses 25 to 36. Please read with me Romans chapter 11, verses 25 to 36. I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers and sisters. So that you may not be considered, Israel has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. And in this way, all Israel will be saved, as it is written. A deliverer will come from Zion. He will turn godlessness away from Jacob. And this is my covenant with them when I take away their sin. As far as the gospel is concerned, they are enemies for your sake. But as far as election is concerned, they are loved on account of the patriarchs. For God's gift and his call are irrevocable. Just as you were at one time disobedient to God, have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience. So they too have now become disobedient in order that they too may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. For God has bound everyone over to disobedience so that he may have mercy on them all. Oh, the death of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay them? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The topic, like I have said before, is the riches of God made manifest. It, the commentary says, Beloved, we have, have you ever considered the death of God's love towards you, that we are not consumed by life challenges? Can anyone measure the wonders of God in the affairs of men? Who made the heavens and the earth and everything in them, according to Genesis 1? Who breathed into man's nostril the breath of life that he may live? Genesis 2, 5 and 6. Did Israel not cross the Red Sea on dry ground? Exodus 14. Was it not because of love that God sent his son Jesus to die that we may live? John 3, 16. Has he not returned to his father to prepare a place for us that we may reign with him in eternal glory? John 14, 1. Are these biblical truths not the riches of God made manifest in man? What have you lost in life? A relationship or a marriage? A family member or a home? A friend or a colleague? A dream? A part of your body? Have you lost hope? Or do you think you have nothing to prove or live for? Perhaps you have failed God. There is good news, the scripture says. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. Psalm 126, verse 5. Let us therefore not be ignorant of the riches of God, which the world cannot offer. Rather, let us always reflect on them daily. Brethren, going through the commentary and looking at the text again and again, it is very clear that each time we look at Paul's conviction, in his letters, it becomes very clear that he deeply appreciates his encounter 
with the Lord, as we saw in Acts 9, which turned around everything about his life and gave him a new meaning and understanding of life. In the same manner, we are a living proof of God's mercy and grace, for we did not contribute anything to end our salvation. The Bible says it's not of he that will it or run it, but of the Lord that showeth mercy. It is quite clear in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, when Paul says that when we are yet sinners, Jesus died for us. Peter, in his first epistle, chapter 2, verse 9, captured our transformation and choice in Christ when he says we are a chosen nation and a royal priesthood. And the essence of that call is so that we may declare the excellencies of he who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. As Christians, we are highly privileged to be favored that God out of his own initiative transferred us from darkness into his marvelous light. These are all the riches of God made manifest and available to us. From the creation of man to the victory of Christ on the cross for our redemption, God has demonstrated deep love for man. Our duty is always to receive that which God eternally has given to us in Christ. God's desire is that we live in appreciation of this truth and remain focused on his eternal purpose for man. One of the strategies of the enemy is to bring doubts and manipulate situations around us to make us forget the blessing God has bestowed upon us. Instead of celebrating the riches of God made manifest to us, Many people live in fear and doubt of what God can do and rather celebrate evil reports. Today we complain virtually about everything as if God is far removed from the reality of our human condition. This is clear in our kinds of prayer today and our over-dependence on the arm of flesh. The world and its pattern cannot offer us anything when compared with the riches of God. Everything that pertains to life and godliness has been given to us in Jesus Christ. Our response, therefore, is to accept Christ and remain rooted in Him so that the fruits of the Holy Spirit will show forth in our lives. We also need to reject everything that is not of Christ so that our mind can be renewed so that we will be able to text and approve God's will his good, pleasing, and perfect will, as we have in Romans 12, verse 2. People of God, and my dear viewers, it does not matter the confusion the devil is bringing in our world today. The unstable situations we experience on daily basis, the evil manipulations we see in our world, that are all ploys of the enemy, to remove our focus from that which God eternally has done for us. No wonder Paul reminds us in our text, verses 35 and 36, who has ever given to God that God should repay them? For from him and through him and for him are all things. As we daily reflect on the love of God and the riches of God made manifest to us, let us continue to count our blessings, naming them one by one. Let us continue to celebrate the goodness of our God, because our God remains the unchanging God in changing times. Let us dwell on these assurances as we live for him alone in these last days, for he who promised is faithful. Let us pray. Loving Father of our soul, to you we hand over our life today. We hand over our work, we hand over our business, we hand over our families. As we renew our strength through the power of the Holy Ghost, may we know more truly the greatness of your salvation. As we live in this reality, O oh God, keep us focused on the purpose of our redemption. May we not be derailed by the changes and chances of life. 
Help us, O oh God, as we go forth in your name to pursue our daily labors. May everything we lay our hand become a source of blessing. And may things turn around for our good. And we may continue to live and honor you all the days of our lives. Thank you, Lord, for prayer answered. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Dear viewers, join us same time, same station tomorrow for another edition of this beautiful program. If you are led to sponsor this program, we humbly invite you to contact the email address that is showing on the screen and the phone number is there. May God bless you. Remain rapturable. Thank you.